A scientific discussion about the age of the universe is not quite as outwardly simple as it may seem. There are numerous ways that scientists use to determine the age of the universe. One fabulous tool has been the Hubble Space Telescope that can see deeper into space than any telescope ever has. The Hubble Telescope has seen galaxies that are 10 billion light years away, which gives us a pretty good clue that the universe is at least 10 billion years old since it took the light from that galaxy 10 billion years to get here. But the galaxy was fully formed, so that means that we still haven't reached the very beginning of the universe. Astronomers have to use other tools to back up what they found with the Hubble Space Telescope to get a very accurate figure as to the true age of the universe. Measuring the radioactive decay of certain elements has been one very useful technique. Using this knowledge and observing very old metal poor stars yields an age of about 14.5 billion years. Another technique is using the age of the oldest star clusters. Measuring from star clusters, astronomers have found the age of the universe to be about 13.6 billion years. A third technique is using the age of the oldest white dwarf stars. A white dwarf star is an object that is about as heavy as the sun, but only about the radius of the Earth. The average density of a white dwarf is a million times denser than water. A tablespoon of the star material would weigh over 32,000 pounds. White dwarf stars form in the centers of red giant stars but are not visible until the envelope of the red giant is ejected into space. The oldest white dwarf stars will be the coldest and thus the faintest. By searching for faint white dwarfs, one can estimate the length of time the oldest white dwarfs have been cooling. This technique gives an age for the universe of about 12.8 billion years. So from all these different techniques and tools astronomers use, they can pretty well conclude that, that the universe is between 13 and 14 billion years old, or at least that appears to be so. But of course we run into conundrums. In the case of the universe, gravity should be working on all of the galaxies that are moving apart, and they should be slowing up, and eventually they should be sucked down upon each other with the possibility that there would then be later a big crunch. They would all move back together and turn back into the singularity that they came from. But astoundingly, this is not the case. The galaxies are actually moving away from each other at accelerating rates. This was an astounding find by astronomers. It just doesn't match any kind of logical scenario that we could imagine. Any object that is accelerating has to have a force on it at all times. So what force could be causing all of these galaxies to accelerate away from each other? Astronomers have named this mysterious force the dark force, even though we don't really know what it is or how it operates. But it has to be there. Before moving on, we need to define a conscious observer. A conscious observer is an individual who can view, contemplate, and record objects, information, and events. On the Earth, the only conscious observers are humans. The second conundrum is even a tougher one to comprehend. It is that nothing exists without a conscious observer. Nothing. There's an ancient philosophical question that if a tree falls in a forest with no conscious observer, does it make a sound? And of course, the first thought that everybody has is, of course it makes a sound. The sound is there, but nobody hears it. But it is there. But in reality, it isn't there. There is no sound because sound is not something that is outside of our realm. Sound is manufactured in our auditory cortex inside of our brains. The real world outside of our brains is dead silent. There is no noise outside of our heads, outside of our brains. Sound is an invention of living things. It does not exist outside of life. It is complete and 100% perception. Sound is how we perceive waves that run through the air at about 600 miles an hour, air waves that are formed by objects vibrating or the contact of two objects together. Air waves are gathered by the outer ear and sent down the ear canal to the eardrum, which causes the eardrum to vibrate, which sets the three tiny bones in the middle ear into motion, which causes the fluid in the inner ear or cochlea to move, causing the hair cells in the cochlea to bend, which causes an electrochemical impulse, which is transmitted through the auditory nerve up to the auditory cortex where they are perceived as sound. Sound and noise are nothing more than perception in our auditory cortex. Interestingly, outside of our auditory cortex, it is dead silent, and in the auditory cortex, where the sound is manufactured, it is also dead silent. Sound is pure perception. 
which of course makes one wonder how did evolution, how did natural selection and mutations know that if they evolved all this unbelievably complex equipment, the end result would be sound. Because when evolution started, there was no such thing as sound. It didn't exist. The exact same thing is true with light. Light is not produced by the sun. It is produced in our visual cortexes. The sun gives off not light, but electromagnetic radiation of different wavelengths. Those electromagnetic waves go through the lens of the eye and hit the retina. The 130 million retinal cells then turn those electromagnetic waves into a biochemical code, which then travels up the optic nerve to the visual cortex. The visual cortex then converts that code into light, color, and visual images. In reality, outside of your head, outside of your brain, there is absolutely no light, there is no images, there is no color, it is absolutely and profoundly pitch dark. It seems that all those images are outside of your head. They are not. They're inside your visual cortex. And amazingly, in your visual cortex, there is no light. It's pitch dark there too. Light is only a perception. When we talk about the speed of light, we are really talking about the speed of electromagnetic waves, not light. Light is an invention of life. And of course one wonders how mutations and natural selection knew that if it made all this incredibly complex equipment, light, color, and visual images would be the result. How did it know that? The exact same thing is true with smell, taste, and touch. All three of these are perceived in sensory areas of your brain. They are not out there. They are inside your head. So if you're getting the idea that everything exists inside of our head and not out there, you can go to the front of the class. What does that do to the age of the universe? The universe can then be no older than the first conscious observer, which makes it a paradox. The universe appears to be 13.7 billion years old, while at the same time it can't be any older than the first conscious primates. Of course, the universe must always be studied according to its apparent age, but the observer paradox will always be lurking. This is Andre Lander, a renowned cosmologist from Stanford University. So then, in a certain sense, the rest of the universe is alive only because I am alive. Yeah. This sounds extremely paradoxical, but that's what we have right now. I must observe it. So it just cannot cut me observing it out of the equation. And my observations is my consciousness. Without me recording it, all the rest of the universe will be dead. They will tell that, um, well, everything becomes real at the moment when it is observed. 